Hey everybody, Abolitionist Jay here with another vlog entry in my series chronicling my attempted escapes from New Yorkistan and my attempt to try some quasi-van nomadism. Today is now May 31st, 2018. Today was the day of the closing on my house. After everything that my family and I have been through, it is finally over. The house has been sold. I am no longer a homeowner. Murder Dog and I are out in the element. Uh, as you can see, it's a little dark in here. Um, maybe we'll try recording in the day tomorrow where there's a little more light, but uh, I'm making do with what we have right now. Things are a little bit he hectic in here. I'll, uh, I'll pan the camera around in a little bit. I am recording from my laptop, so it may be a little clunky as I pick it up and shift it around a little bit for you guys. Uh, I'm not sophisticated enough to have a an individual, you know, a, a separate webcam. I, I just have the integrated camera, which is why my the video quality is not always the greatest. But hey, at least the audio is good, right? And considering I'm sitting here holding my microphone in my car, I think that's pretty good. So anyway, this is uh, this is what this has all been leading up to. This when I started this vlog series, this was, you know, this was the end game. Well, th this was this was the start of the end game was to get to this point where I could be in the vehicle with Murder Dog and uh, we could be testing this stuff out. You know, like I said, the uh, the sale was finally completed today. Now, of course, it wouldn't be my life if there weren't other issues and stuff like that and other holdups. Because uh, obviously, you know, my court case is still going on. I, I put an update out, out about that yesterday. And until that is finished, my family and I can't actually leave here for good because we need to know, you know, what the hell's going on with that. But since the next court date isn't until July 9th, uh, we, we are going to be headed to Michigan for the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest in the end of June, June 21st through the 25th at the Circle Pine Centers in Delton, Michigan. That's going to be super exciting. Uh, I mean, I, I bought those, I bought my tickets the second they put them on sale for cryptos uh, with, you know, for to purchase them with cryptos. And I, you know, purchased tickets for all of my family and I was just dying to get there because I've been there twice uh, so far the past couple of years, had an excellent time and as soon as I leave, I can't wait to get back. So I'm super stoked that, uh, you know, even though the court case isn't over and originally when I purchased these tickets, it was in the hopes that everything would be finally be settled. The house would have been sold months ago and we would have actually been in Indiana before the fest. So we only had a few, uh, three or four hour drive. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, so, yeah, so we'll be headed out there uh, in a few weeks. So that's really exciting. Um I have to figure out some things with uh, the wife and kids. Uh, apparently, they may be taking a trip that I wasn't really aware of. Uh, I wasn't really thrilled about it at first, but it may actually work out if it can be planned during the same time that I need to take a trip. Because as I as as I've spoke uh, spoke about before, one of my plans is to get. Well, first and foremost, I, I actually have to do this tonight. I forgot I forgot to do this. I meant to do this a couple of days ago, but is to get myself a new mailing address because, you know, unfortunately, I've asked and they won't deliver to my car. I tried. Post office isn't a lot of fun that way. I mean, hey, I even said, listen, it's not like you have to track me down. I'll meet you at the same spot every day. You know, we'll pick a time and a place and I'll be there. Don't worry. Yeah, they didn't go for that. So I do need a mailing address. I don't want to pay for a P.O. box. But as I have spoken about, thanks to my friends at the Vanu Podcast, uh, Shane Radliff and Jason Booth, uh, uh, and of course Kyle Reardon, although I don't know Kyle, so when I say my friends, I no, no offense, Kyle, we don't know each other yet. <laughs> Hopefully we'll rectify that in the future. But thanks to those guys over there talking about Vanu and the whole Van Nomadism thing and bringing the uh, yourbestaddress.com, I think that's the website, uh, to my attention where you can get a physical street address in the state of South Dakota for about 12 bucks a month, plus a couple other fees. I think there's like a $20 uh, sign-up fee, just a one-time fee, and there is you know postage fees and stuff like that. But it works out. I think it's somewhere in the same neighborhood, maybe a little cheaper than a P.O. box, but you get an actual street address. And once you do that, if you want to, you can take you once you uh, take that step. The next step, if you so choose to pursue it, is to get residency in the state of South Dakota. And I'm probably going to end up doing that just because it's going to hopefully make life easier in the long run. My the registration on my vehicle does run out at the end of June. And as much as I hate the government paperwork, 
and uh, you know my ha- having all the proper papers and whatnot. Uh, I don't want to be harassed any more than I need to be. Obviously, the whole idea of Vanu and Van Nomad. Well, the whole idea of Vanu is to limit your limit your exposure to coer- coercion. And since I'm a big fan of that strategy, and I'm trying to implement some of those things into these this quasi Van Nomadism lifestyle that I'm attempting to lead for the next few months, that uh, you know sticking out like a sore thumb isn't a good idea unfortunately and since i'm still going to be stuck here in the state of new york i should probably have my papers in order that way it's just one less thing i have to worry about but i definitely don't want to spend the 200 dollars to get a new register uh, to have my registration renewed here in new york when my goal is to leave as soon as possible now somebody pointed out to me earlier when i was having a discussion about this that well you know they they will give you the money back prorated if you if you leave early it's like yeah, I don't trust the state of New York to pay me anything. They've they've done me wrong most of the time I've been here, so I don't trust that. And I just don't want to lay the money out front. It's like two hundred something dollars for for a two year registration up here, and I just don't want to lay that out. So if we can work out the timing, Murder Dog and I may take that trip out to South Dakota. Now, it's going to be kind of tricky because unfortunately, since we're going to Michigan anyway, it would make sense for me to either head to South Dakota first and then meet the family back in Michigan, or if we finally get around to figuring out how we're going to get over to Indiana and start scouting the locations. I had wanted to do it on my trip there, like, you know, head out to Indiana, maybe stop by to see some friends and uh, check out some locations in their areas and then shoot out to South Dakota and then on my way back stop in Indiana a second time and see some other friends and scout out areas in their locate where they're where they are um, that would obviously make it easier and a little cheaper because I wouldn't have to be running back and forth but because of the court case being you know held up and not we not having an answer as to what's going to happen it's really tough you know I'd, I'd love to be you know, now that the house is sold, I really love to be out, out here, out there and scouting at locations so I can find a new home for my family ASAP because as much as I'm looking forward to this experience or as I talked about in the last video, uh, you know, I'm doing what I think I need to do to secure the long term, uh, you know, future for my family and whatnot. Uh, you know, and I, but I am looking forward to it in that sense because, well, this is the situation I'm in. I'm trying to make the best of it, trying to take like a stoic approach. All right, what can you do with what you have and let's run with it. Uh, you know, despite all that, I'd still love to be able to set up a house for my family so we could all be together again because yeah, the adventure sounds kind of cool. And I've talked to a lot of people and I I think I can have some fun with this. I am still going to miss my family and it would still be a heck of a lot better if we could live under the same roof. So, you know, that that's unfortunate because that process really can't start until court's over. You know, I need to know what the final outcome is going to be before I can start planning to uh, send my send my family out there. Because, you know, with the luck that we've had, uh, if I went out there now and found us a place and even if it was a great place at a great price and, you know, we were all set up and whatnot. And we, we have we have some of the money now that the house has been sold and we'd be set up for a little bit. And then all of a sudden court gets dragged on even further and worst case scenario i get found guilty and get slapped with probation which means i can't leave the state at all because the stupid misdemeanor uh probation here is actually worse apparently than a felony probation if you have a felony probation you can transfer that anywhere apparently just you know just about anywhere you can get transferred to another state misdemeanor probation here in new york nope you get misdemeanor probation you're stuck here until the probation's over so you know, that would be our luck. I would set them up in a house and then be like, no, no, now you got to stay an extra six months or a year or whatever it is. So yeah, can't take that risk. So we have to hold out on that, but I'm going to try to plan the trip the best I can. You know, like I said, one option would be for me to head out that way before Michigan and and then circle back and meet my family there. But I'm really trying to avoid having to have the wife drive all the way out to the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest with just her and the kids because they've never done that long of a car trip together. I mean, I did it last year with the girls, just me and the girls, but I'm also a lot more comfortable driving long distances and, 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 and pushing past, you know, when most people would be like, oh, maybe I'll pull over and get some rest. And I can usually drink, drink a coffee or an energy drink and keep going another couple hours. Um, you know, because I'm all about picking up as much time, you know, making up as much time as you possibly can at all at, at all instances. So, you know, and, and it's just not really fair to make her, I, I feel bad making her do that. So I'm trying to avoid having to do that. Anyway, so, you know, that's that's the next couple of months 
some stuff were up in the air, but, you know, we're going to uh, play around with this stuff while we have it. You know, like I said, I, I closed on the house. What is it? It's now 9.15. Uh, I think officially like six and a half, seven hours ago, we were finished with the closing finally. Since then, I've kind of just been driving around. I had uh, had some, you know, last, the last bills at places I had to pay. Um, unfortunately, because of the way the stupid system works, you know, they, they hand out like a bunch of different checks when you sell your house because you get paid from this person, you get paid from this person, you get a cut of this and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then they had to withhold certain money because I needed to pay the final water bill and clean out the rest of the stuff in the garage because when the buyer showed up this morning for the final walkthrough, I did have a little pile of stuff in the garage that I hadn't got ready yet. And I asked them if it was okay if we went ahead with the closing and then I just, you know, I locked up the house, but I left the garage open so that I could access that. And, you know, could they just give me like 24 hours or so to clear the rest of that out. And they agreed. So, you know, I left the closing. I ran off to pay the water bill. I had to go meet up with the wife and kids because all the checks are made out to her because I don't have a bank account anymore. Uh, so I had to give her all the checks so she could deposit them so we can start actually making use of some of that money and paying off the rest of the, the debts that we have. That you know, especially the ones, well, some of the ones that I've racked up in this whole process. Some of the, some some of them I'm fighting because I believe the the company I'm dealing with is in breach of contract. But we'll get to that later. Um, you know, so I did that, and then uh, then I had to come. And we had to finally clear out the garage, and now it is finally completely cleared. The last remaining piece in there was my mining rig, which uh, is still up for sale. I think I've mentioned that before. Anybody interested in a mining rig? Hey, hit me up. Uh, I don't really feel like delivering this thing, but if we can meet somewhere local, or I could drive a little bit to meet up with you, and we could make it make a deal, let's make it happen. I have it in the car right now because I had no other place to go with it. Uh, I do have a buddy local who did offer to take it off my hands for a little while, and uh, I'm just waiting for him to get done with uh, work tonight, and hopefully I can swing up there and drop that off so there's a little more room in the car again. Uh, as far as the car, well, as I mentioned in the last video, we did not get to set things up and test things out the way I would have liked to because of all the delays and the mess with court, how I had to go twice um, because they screwed up the dates and then claimed that they didn't. Uh, you know, so all that wasted time. So I didn't get to sit and, uh, you know, test out everything like I wanted to. Also didn't get to set things up exactly like I wanted to. So that kind of sucks. And we're definitely going to have to play with this for a few days because right now uh, I'm going to try to pan the camera a little bit around a little bit. It may be a little difficult to see uh, because it's so dark. But uh, we just, I just kind of have things shoved in here right now. And poor Murder Dog is sitting in the back, uh, kind of in the middle of the mess. I mean, I have things strapped up with uh, bungee cords on all the sides. And I'm trying to keep things so we have a clearing in the middle for her to hang out in. And then my plan was that uh, once it comes time to sleep, for at least for the first couple of days until I can figure out a better system, I will just shift some of the bigger items into my into the driver's seat so since I'm not going to be there when I'm sleeping in the back and you know like I said I'm just unfortunately I'm about to move things back and forth for a little while until I can create a better system I did actually see a cool picture I think I might have mentioned this in the last video I can't remember if I did or not uh now because well it's been a crazy couple of days so my mind's not uh exactly as clear as it usually is uh with remembering stuff like that but uh, if I didn't, if I did mention it, I apologize. I'm going to say it again. Uh, my buddy Shane Radliff, who I mentioned earlier, sent me a picture yesterday or the day before of somebody else who's doing a van nomadism type thing out of a Honda Element like me. And they actually have their, they have it set up. He sent me the pic. They actually have like a, it looked like maybe a twin size bed in the back and it's jacked up and they have like, uh, I don't know exactly what it was, but it was something, you know, strong enough to support the weight of a human lining both sides and then obviously there was something in the middle to hold it up too but it was you know the 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 twin mattress was lifted and look from the picture it looked like a good eight to 12 inches off the floor so now not only did you have a, a nice bed an actual bed to sleep on you have you have storage space underneath i thought that was kind of cool I may look into doing something like that. I'm guessing, I don't know, since Shane just sent me the picture and I didn't get a sto backstory or anything, I'm going to guess that that individual is not also toting a dog around with them. So that may be a little more difficult with Murder Dog. Um, you know, because the one thing I was worried about, uh, even without a bed, just with the setup that we were going to go with, was 
you know, on rainy days when she when I have to take her out and she gets herself all muddy, dry, drying her off and getting her in the car is a little difficult when you're outside in the rain. Like if we could find something to like a like an overhang or something to pull under where it's dry there, then I could dry her off and put her in the car. But if you know other situations, we're probably not going to have that luxury. So you know, trying to get her in the car with getting it as, as not as, as least wet as possible may be a challenge. And of course, we had to deal with that right away because on our very first day, it's been raining pretty much all day. Um, heavy at times, not crazy heavy. I mean, it's definitely been worse. I've definitely seen much worse storms, but it's been a pretty constant. Anywhere from a drizzle to a moderately heavy rain <laughs> pretty much all day long. And, of course, that just figures that on my on my first day out, on my first night out, this is what we're going to have to deal with. Now, of course, we're in a car. We're in the car right now, so the rain won't affect us. But, you know, my big one of my biggest concerns going into this was not the loneliness factor because, you know, as I've described before, I'm a, I'm a self-professed hermit a lot of the times. I don't mind being alone. I've done it for, you know, large periods of my life. Uh, so that, you know, so that tends to affect some people. They go a little stir crazy after a while being out alone for, for like, like this. Um, but for me, I never really thought that was going to be a, a big concern. Um, because like I said, I'm, I'm kind of used to that. But for me, the, the bigger issue was, uh, oh geez, now I just totally lost my train of thought, man. It's been that kind of day. I'll have to get back to that. It'll it'll probably come to me a little bit. I apologize. Anyway, so we uh, oh yeah, that's uh, I think that's what I'm saying is uh, you know my one of my bigger concerns was uh, keeping her dry and getting her in here and uh, and now that we're dealing with the rain and of course the uh, the setup that I used uh, I have the car carrier on top and I I set it up a little differently than the last time I used the car carrier and I kept looking at it going. That's not quite right, but it's holding steady. Like I shook it, we I drove around a bunch and sped up and slowed down, and then the thing didn't move. So I'm like, all right, we're good. And then the rain happened, and there were some leaks coming into the car because I used too many too many straps to keep the thing uh, tight, and it ended up causing a little uh, gap in the uh, seals on the doors. So unfortunately, I had some drips coming in. We had to take care of that. Um, but you know, like I said, this is a uh, this is not the finished product. This is this is not exactly the way I wanted to go into this, but you know, here we are, so I'm going to make do. So really quickly, I'm going to grab the uh, laptop and see if I can uh, show you guys around with what we're dealing with right now. Like I said, it's kind of a mess, but uh, but, but we're going to figure things out slowly but surely. Hopefully, it dries out tomorrow, so I can rearrange some stuff. Actually, take things out of the vehicle and put them on the ground for a little bit while I uh, rearrange things. Um, rather than trying to have to shift things around inside the like w- while everything's still in the car because I don't want to bring it out in the rain. But anyway, I will be back to the mic in one second, and we'll uh, try to take a look. I don't know. Hopefully, you guys can still hear me. I'm going to put the little mic down for a second. But this is what we're looking at right now. Yeah, it's kind of dark. It's going to be hard to see, unfortunately. But uh, there she is. Hey, murder dog. Cammy. Hey, Smooshy. There's the murder dog. I don't know if you can really see her that well. But yeah, we kind of just got everything stacked up back here. And uh, like I said, I uh, I have some uh, bungee cords strapping up things like uh, like my you know my my one suitcase where I shoved all the clothes that I'm carrying with me and a bunch of my toiletries and stuff and some of the towels, a couple of towels. So I, I think I managed to cram just about everything in there, which is good. I only needed one bag for that. Um, I also happen to have a giant plastic, like, skinny tub that we had one left over from the packing, and I figured I could at least store some stuff in there, and right now it's kind of just standing on its side, so we have a little extra room, and then I actually have my recording table from my studio, because it's a folding table, and I figured on nice days when we want when I want to do videos, or if I'm trying to do podcasts and stuff, I can actually set up outside, and that actually doesn't take up too much room, because it folds up kind of nicely, but... You know, like I said, unfortunately right now we're going to have to shift things around at night in order to sleep. But hopefully within a couple of days I'll have a better, better, a better plan with organization. Uh, obviously right now it's also even tighter because, like I mentioned, we ha- I have my mining rig crammed in here too because I, I wanted to take it out of the... Uh, out of the garage and, and be uh, and be completely done with the house. Although, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but right now Murder Dog and I are actually currently sitting in the driveway 
of the property that we up until today owned. Uh, and it, and it, which may seem ironic to some people because, you know, I, I got into some trouble for b- being mad at people trespassing on my, pro- on, my, on my property. I am not actually trespassing. Even though I did sign the contract today, I was given 24 hours to clear out the premises. So technically I have until 2 o'clock tomorrow to keep showing up here and taking stuff out if I need to. But uh, like I said, I wanted to get that over and done with tonight. And my one friend did say that he was hopefully going to be able to meet up with me tonight to take the take the minor from me. If not, it's going to be even tighter in here. I may have to sleep in the front seat, which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt because it can't really re- recline because I have a bunch of stuff jammed behind me. But again, we were we were rushed into the at the last you know the last minute we were kind of rushed along where I where I had planned it to uh, to work things out a little better. And now we're, you know, now we don't really have a choice. So we're just going to do it on the fly and figure things out as we go. And if I have to spend one night sleeping like that, I, I guess it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's, it won't be the most comfortable, but I'm, I should at least get some sleep because last night I did not get any at all. Uh, I was a, a crazy person last night trying to get everything done, trying to get the last of the packing done, the last of the cleaning done. And then... As I as I had uh, promised during the last video that I did, I was going to try to do one last one from the house the night before. And even though by the time I was done with everything else, it was 1.30 in the morning, I was wide awake and wired. So I figured, why the heck not? So I did record that video last night, which was vlog number eight. And now here we are with vlog number nine the next day. Actually, less than 24 hours later that I'm now recording this one. I'm not sure exactly when I will post this one because uh, I was able to pick up some good Wi-Fi from my phone, but I wasn't able to po- pick up some good Wi-Fi from my laptop. So I may have to shift some things around. I'll figure it out. This may may actually get out tomorrow, but uh, that's fine. So, you know, like I said, this was my plan was to do dailies. This is the first one from the car. And, you know, it's been a, it's been an interesting day so far. Yeah, I remarked earlier to somebody who I, I made a post on, on Facebook, which I've been avoiding largely for the past couple of days. I mean, I, I've been avoiding it pretty largely for a while now, but even more so during the past couple of days because I've just been so swamped. Uh, but I made a post earlier to say that, you know, I'm finally fi- finally no longer a homeowner owner and, you know, I'm uh, excited for the new adventure that's about to start. And somebody commented, uh, you know, congratulating me. And I said, yeah, you know, I, I said, I said, thanks brother. That's great. And, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I never thought I'd be this happy to be homeless. You know, <laughs> this is the first time in my life I've actually been homeless and, uh, as scary as some of this can be and, you know, nerve wracking, I'm just so happy to be done with the mess of, of owning a home here in New York. I mean, granted, I still have to wait for the stupid permits to get settled out so I can collect the rest of my money. But, you know, I'm done with paying bills for, you know, all the the heating and the electric and all that junk and uh, just dealing with the pain in the ass that is home ownership. I'm just, you know, like I said, never thought I'd be this happy to be homeless, but I'm kind of happy right now. Um, Would have been nicer if I could have seen my kids and my wife for longer today. Unfortunately, we were only able to hang out for a couple hours and most of that was just me sitting in the car with the kids and the dog because they had to take murder dog from me in order so I could go do the closing because I didn't want to leave her in the car. It's a good thing I didn't because we were there a lot longer than we, I was told we were going to be. And I would have felt really bad if she was stuck in the car that whole time because it was raining and I couldn't leave the windows open. Uh, so, you know, we, we ended up meeting up so the checks could get cashed and my uh, wife could do a little shopping. And I just hung out in the car with the girls and the dog for a while. And, you know, so at least got to see them today. That was nice. So hopefully tomorrow will be better. Uh, the rain seems to be slowing down. Hopefully tomorrow will be a nicer day. Like I said, if it is, then I'm going to probably find some place to park and tear apart pretty much everything and repack everything up and see if I can fit some more things up in the uh, car carrier. I may also have to reposition the car carrier a little bit. You know, like I said, I made, made, made an error with the, uh, amount of bungees I used and ho- hopefully I'll correct that. So there'll be no more gaps. So there'll be no more little water leaks. You know, it was just a little single drip, 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 but you know, that can get annoying when it's inside the vehicle. So hopefully I can correct that and figure out a better way to organize everything. I mean, I am carrying a lot of crap with me, a lot of stuff that most van nomads, van nomads probably 
wouldn't pack. But because I have the luxury of still being close to, well, not my home, but my kids and my, my wife's home. And, you know, I do have some people local that have offered to help me out. Uh, I kind of, you know, that's why I'm kind of, I half-assed that out the door because I knew I, I had fallbacks, basically. But I would like to get this a lot more tightened up. I would like to get, uh, you know, try to maybe whittle down some of the things I have. I will have, again, more more things than most people would carry probably because I, I do have a lot of my uh, recording equipment with me and stuff too because I do really want to try to figure out a way to start doing not just my own, not just these videos and not, and, uh, and my solo podcast, but I want to try to be able to record with other people so I can keep the rest of my shows going while I'm gone. Uh, you know, that's why I started to mention before I was up ridiculously late last night because uh, I did actually manage to get another show in, even though I had to cancel the Tuesday night recording that I had because of the whole court kerfuffle. But because I was doing a video last, uh, because I finished doing the video for last night somewhere around 2 a.m., and then I was still wide awake at that point because, you know, I just the adrenaline was pumping and everything. Uh, I happened to get an email a little while later from Michael W. Dean over at the Freedom Fiends uh, asking me a question about something. And because I responded right away, he's like, oh, you're awake. Do you want to do a show? And I looked at the clock and it was closing in on three. And I was like, eh, I'm wide o- I'm wide awake. Why not? And then we ended up recording. It's like five o'clock in the morning, at which point I was then I was pretty exhausted. And, you know, I was supposed to be up at a decent hour today because the final walkthrough was at 1130 and I had to finish off the last of the packing, you know, I the cleaning, basically it was the cleaning supplies and whatever I still had left in the house that I had been using that needed to be packed away. So I needed to wake up by 10 to get all that done. So, you know, passing out at five should have been five hours of sleep. That's not, you know, great, but it's not horrible. Yeah, unfortunately, I ended up waking up at like 8, couldn't fall back to sleep. So I'm running on like three hours of sleep right now. So even if we do end up having to sleep with this with the miner in the car, um, you know, there is enough room. Like I said, it was kind of hard to see, but there's enough room for Murder Dog to stretch out back there. So she'll be fine. So even if I have to sit up, you know, sleep sitting up in my front in my driver's seat, I'm pretty sure I'll get at least some rest because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel wired again right now, but I'm pretty sure I'll crash at some point and get some sleep and again for tonight at least worst case scenario if my friend never ends up getting back to me so I can dump the miner tonight and maybe hang out there hang out there for a little while maybe even just use his driveway I could probably get away with using this driveway tonight and we may do so just for convenience sake and then starting tomorrow night we'll start looking for other locations to do stealth camping in and stuff like that well uh, I think that's I don't know I've been rambling on long enough let's see yeah, about 28 minutes. Um, I don't know what else we got here tonight. Like I said, it's uh, this is all very new, very exciting, um, a little nerve-wracking. Uh, you know, the whole screw-up with the, the mounting of the car carrier that caused the leak kind of ma- pissed me off before. But it wasn't like I was pissed at myself. I was like, you're an idiot. You should, you know, why'd you do that? Because now you have to deal with this in the rain. But I think I, I managed to take those straps out for the time being. And the, the car carrier, it shifted a little bit forward, but it seems to be holding pretty steady. So we should be good as long as I don't go, like, you know, drag racing tonight. We shouldn't have a problem. And then, again, as long as it's nicer tomorrow, I can uh, fix everything up and hopefully – reorganize and get stuff in better positions so it's a lot easier for us to shift around in here and stuff like that and uh yeah so i think that'll do it for tonight uh i like i said i did just want to get this first one out there and uh say you know it's good to be homeless (laughs) i'm uh i'm uh i'm kind of i'm kind of stoked ish (laughs) it's tempered you know, I've said it all along, you know, the, the missing my family, mi- the missing of my family is uh, is temporary all this. But, you know, it's still uh, it's a lot to process and uh, it's it's definitely going to be adventure. But I'm I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to making the best out of this that I can. And again, hopefully if I am able to keep up with these daily videos and I, I can track my successes and most likely more failures, then uh, not only will I learn something, but hopefully you out there will learn something too. And uh, I do know that I got a uh, another message, or I, I think I got multiple messages from the uh, gentleman who messaged me a couple of weeks ago after the video 
Uh, he tried to confuse me by using another YouTube name this time. Just kidding. You, he did point out that it was him just so I knew because um, he was he was responding from a couple of different accounts. I have not got a chance to read those in full yet and respond, but I will hopefully before you actually see this video. But I did know I did ca- I did read enough of it to catch uh, that he was he was saying thanks for uh, the shout out. And definitely, man, definitely. It's uh, like I said, I, I wasn't kidding. I wasn't just blowing smoke up your ass when I said I was stoked that you reached out to me because I was. It was so exciting. You know, on one, on one level, just because, oh, here's somebody else who's been doing, you know, hardcore what I'm just trying to test out, but has probably got a wealth of knowledge I can I can draw from. And and it was also great that finally somebody, rea- you know, reacted to one of my videos or, or podcast instead of just, you know, liking and sharing them, which is awesome. I definitely appreciate that. But I ask for interaction constantly, and I rarely get any. So it was it was it was great on both of those uh, levels that uh, that he reached out to me and. You know, like I said, hopefully, uh, hopefully sometime in the near future we can meet up, you know, especially if I'm going to start traveling out west and you're headed eastbound. One of these days we'll uh, manage to catch up. So once again, thank you, everybody, for uh, watching. This has been Abolitionist J with vlog number nine in my crazy series chronicling my escape from New Yorkistan. And this is night one. We are we are out of the house. All right, we're still on the property, but hey, we're out of the house, man. We can't even get back in the house. We gave him the keys. It's all locked up. So we are officially living out of the element as of right now. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. And uh, I'll fill all you guys in then. May even record first thing in the morning, so I'll let you know uh, my first impressions of how our first night went. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.